Hello, welcome to the crafting table, and this week in No Man's Land. So pretty much more of the same uh, for this week. We get a bunch of a uh, bunch more pallets stacked up, and I've I tried to basically organize the pallets by good. So we've got mushrooms, we've got honey, we've got flowers, and looks like strawberries in here for now. That will obviously change as time goes on throughout the month. But we're trying to stack them uh, based on category, I guess you could say. Fruit fruit type or commodity type. Uh, this will be a lot easier once we have a larger warehouse, possibly later on in the, uh, later in the year. I don't know why I stopped here. I think I was looking... I was, I was thinking about something. There we go, we've got a couple of mushroom pallets already, some flower pallets. Just checking on the honey to see how much we got. 128 liters there, it looked like. And we just got a lettuce pallet, which will might very well be the only lettuce pallet we get in January. Since lettuce grows very slowly compared to the other pallet types. Which I should really just put that on... I guess in the middle actually kind of makes sense. Do our standard thing of parking the forklift over here for now. And it looks like I'm checking what's coming up next, which I think tomatoes looks like it's going to be coming up next. I go and I check on the sheep as usual. They're still doing good with the food amount that they have. I think eventually I'll get the square baler for the sheep. Uh, hay or... well... Grass does the same thing, so I might, might as well just leave it as grass. So it looks like we've got a pallet ready somewhere. Looks like tomatoes. Yep, tomatoes. I'm just gonna grab this tomato pallet, stack it in with the rest. We've got some pretty good money going now after uh, market day in December, or the you know the sell time at the end of the month in December. So I'll end up using that for something. I think I used it for uh, some extra beehives. I want to try to get to probably 20 to 25 beehives when I'm actually producing cereal. So I'll be placing one or two here and there whenever I get the chance. Going back to bed again. Sleeping on to... I think this makes this the 5th? Yes, 5th of January. Nice little flurry of snow going on right now. Looks like we got some strawberries to pack in. Get them out of the snow, out of the moisture. Although it doesn't help that the, <laughs> the shed is open air, so... But... I can I can pretend right so I'm just gonna go ahead and stack it up there and it looked like another uh, yeah I think I moved a flower pallet already so just moving the mushroom pallet here getting that in there as well and I don't think it was this week because I I kind of uh, record some of these a little ahead of ahead of schedule just depending on. Uh, what I have time for, but I, I believe I have the next one already recorded, and I kind of shift the flower pallets around to uh, give myself a bit of extra space. So going to bed, going on to January 6th. Unfortunately, during the winter, uh, for a long series such as this, kind of the nature of the beast that a lot of the activities are pretty pretty dull, uh, pretty monotonous. It's just kind of stacking pallets, selling when we get the chance, and it looks like we've got an extra honey pallet now. Plus the bees only produce so much during the winter time. I found that out. Um, I kind of did a little bit of research on that, trying to figure out, well, how much, how much does each... Uh, I mean, I know the larger 
hives that I've been buying, the 33 Langstroth hives, they do produce more, but I wasn't sure how much more, and I couldn't get a very definitive answer. I think the only way to really do that would be to uh, place each hive individually, wait for honey to appear, and then get the honey out of the way, and then get rid of the old hive and do the new one. But it uh, from the information I was trying to find, uh, I did find that bees, supposedly, I don't have numbers for this, produce more during the warmer months. So going into spring and summer. So winter is kind of their dormant season, so we're not getting as much. But we're stacking up quite a good amount of commodities here to sell later on. So I finish what I'm doing, go and park up the skid steer for the night, and head on to bed. Most likely taking care of other things. Oh, it looks like I actually go and fill up some water. The, uh, the two greenhouses, yeah, these two greenhouses for sure, since they hold so little water. And their cycles are a lot faster, too. So I finished doing that, and I don't know if I fill up the rest of the greenhouses or if I just leave them be for now. Yeah, it looks like I leave them be. Fill the water back up, park the tractor up for the day, and go inside. Still need to buy a pressure washer to wash all my equipment off. That'll come eventually, I'm sure. <laughs> January 7th now, just checking on the greenhouses and the sheep. The sheep are definitely producing a lot more wool in January than they were in December so far. Nothing much in the way of honey. Looks like everything's pretty much cleared out. And I think I... I had to walk away for a moment, that's why the uh, that quick transition happened. I think I walked away from the computer, I had some something pressing that I had to do right away. Oh, almost went into the sky with that pallet. It's a little trick you can do, it's pretty funny. You can pick the pallet up while you're walking onto it, and you'll, you'll fly up into the sky with it. So right here I'm just kind of situating this. Again, I don't remember, I don't think I flatten those out yet. I think that's next uh, next week's, is when I flatten those out and I kind of make a bit more room. And the reason why I ended up doing that was, I believe, after this mushroom palette, or possibly that honey palette. I find out it's going to be kind of difficult to shift the pallets around in there, or, or move them into the shed, if I, especially since mushrooms produce a lot faster than honey. So there'll be more mushroom pallets than there will honey pallets. So I think I end up figuring that out here at some point. Possibly on the next day. But just moving this moving this over here, and I move it, yeah, between the honey and the flower pallets. And I can already kind of tell what's gonna be happening here after smacking into the side of that top honey pallet. I've already got an inkling of, oh, this is this isn't gonna work properly. I'm gonna have to move this stuff around, I think. I must confess, this is, this and the Silver Run series is the only time I've I've been using the uh, the the pallet forks at all. Honestly, in my own free time, if I'm playing, I use an auto loader. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, an auto loader mod. It's like trailers that just they, it places the pallets on the trailers by itself. Just because sometimes it it gets really frustrating trying to place. Uh, pallets, especially tra trailers, will start shifting or sinking into the ground, and you can't pull them back out again. Yeah, here we go. Just placing down that honey pallet. I believe I moved the other one. Yeah, just try to straighten it out as best as I can. And it looks like we've got a lot of honey already. Look like about 103 liters there, it seems. 
And I think that's, uh, yeah, that looks like that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, oh, here, here it is. This, I decided um, to get two more 33 Langstroth hives. And I place these down just, just over here. The placement doesn't really. I, I'm not really too fussed about where the, where the hives go, at this point, since none of the crops I'm going to be growing. Um, benefit from the hives. But that's two more. I believe that makes 13 hives. But that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Until then, have a great night, everyone.